Hey guys, so today I thought it would be fun to do a get ready with me using my Project Pan products. So I'm going to be using products from my year-long 10 pan as well as my Pan Those Eyeshadows project. And then I'll fill in any gaps with other products that I just feel like using if I don't have a Project Pan item in every category. So yeah, I just thought it would be fun to show you guys how I've been using my products because usually in my Project Pan updates you don't really get to see the products in action and the kind of tips and tricks that I use to maximize the use that I get out of them. So I have two complexion products in my Project Pan, the NYX Born to Glow Foundation and the Pacifica Liquid Cover Concealer. And some days I'll use the Pacifica concealer on its own as a foundation, but today I want to use the NYX Born to Glow. So I probably will use the Pacifica liquid cover as a spot concealer today because I don't really like it on my under eyes, as you guys know. So I usually take about that much of this foundation. Lately, I've really been trying to apply just less foundation overall. Ever since I did that video a few weeks ago on testing your makeup tips, in that video, one of the tips that was shared was skipping the nose when it comes to foundation. And in the comments of that video, a lot of people were saying that they also will just kind of skip areas of their face. What I've been doing is like when I start applying my foundation, I like to just kind of dot it around like this, you know, sort of get it roughly on my skin. And I used to do a dot on my nose, my cheeks, my chin, my forehead. Um, but lately I've been trying to remember to just not put it on my nose and then as I'm blending it out with my sponge, I'll kind of blend it on those other areas of my face first. And then I'll kind of just take whatever is left on my sponge and just lightly tap a very small amount on the nose. That way I feel like it still ties everything together, but there's really a very, very thin layer of product on my nose. So I've been enjoying that technique lately. That's not really specific to my project pan, but that's just kind of how I've been using this foundation lately. Really the only parts of my face that I typically want coverage are my cheeks. So that's kind of where I apply the most product. And luckily my cheeks are also the areas that where the foundation doesn't really break down much. My, usually the foundation breaks down in like this area for me. And I definitely think that sometimes with project panning, and you guys can let me know if you have ever felt this way, if you do project pans, but sometimes there's almost this like desire to use more of the product than you actually need. Um, but I really try not to, to do that or not to fall into that because it's pointless. Like it's pointless to use unnecessary amounts of a product just to use it up faster. Like at that point, you might as well just throw the product in the trash or like dump it down the drain if you really want to go through it. But even if it means I'm going to see slower progress on this foundation using less of it, um, I'm okay with that because I'd rather be happy with the way my makeup looks than use too much of it for no reason. So I am going to take a little bit of this Pacifica liquid cover concealer and just kind of dot it on the areas of my face where I have a little bit of acne marks, acne scarring, just to bump up that coverage a little bit. But there have also been some days where I have mixed this concealer with other foundations or a lot of times I wear this as my foundation. So I'll just apply it like I would a foundation. It actually looks really pretty as a foundation. It's quite glowy, but it has pretty good coverage and I, I just like the finish that it has on my skin. I, Funnily enough though, I really don't like it on my under eyes for some reason. It just doesn't quite have enough coverage there and I feel like it doesn't last very well on my under eyes or the coverage doesn't stay for very long, <laughs> even though I like it just fine on my face. So then actually before I apply my concealer, I am gonna go in with my liquid blush. So I actually have two blushes in my project pan right now, the Cloven Hallow Liquid Blush in Blossom and the CoverGirl Cheekers Blush in Natural Twinkle. And I actually really enjoy layering these together. So I like to apply my cream or liquid blush before concealer because sometimes I feel like if I apply concealer first, some of my concealer gets lifted up as I'm blending out the blush. It is actually getting harder to pick up a uh, product on this brush. It's like really only coming out on the very tip of the brush. So I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do when it gets really low. But I like applying this actually kind of more on the apples of my cheeks. And then I will blend it out with just whatever brush I'm in the mood for. Um, I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 101 brush. I 
I just love how fresh and youthful this blush color is. So I'll mainly stipple that out on the like the apples of the cheeks and then I will slightly blend it up towards like my under eye. And then I might take whatever's left on the brush and just tap it on the bridge of the nose. Oh, I love this blush. They don't make it anymore, they discontinued it, which I still don't understand because it was such a good product. I also have my liquid highlighter in my project pan. This is the Becca liquid highlighter in the shade Champagne Pop. And lately I've actually been liking applying a little bit of this to my under eyes. Whoa, there was a cat hair. Just for a little extra brightness there. And then I also am going to tap some of this onto my cheekbones as well. As well as a little bit on the bridge of the nose and the cupid's bow. It's such a subtle highlighter that even if you don't normally like highlighter on the tip of the nose, I feel like this works really well because it's not like glittery or anything. It's really not a blinding highlight. Um, it just looks very natural. So I'm just going to use this Sigma Soft Blend Concealer Brush to blend that out. See how that's just such a nice like lit from within glow type of highlighter? And then because I don't have a concealer or like a good under eye concealer in my project pan, I'm just going to go in with my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo. This has been my go-to for a long time. Great coverage on this one. So then again, I don't have a face powder in my project pan, so I'm going to use the one that's in my makeup basket currently, which is the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. And I'm going to use that as both my under eye powder and my face powder. Alright, so I also just recently rolled my Jordana bronzer in the shade Sunkissed into my project pan. I'm just trying to hit pan on this because I've had it for quite a while. And lately I've just been liking kind of a soft bronzer look, so I haven't been going too heavy handed with this, but I'm using my EcoTools Full Powder Brush. I really like this brush for really a lot of purposes, but it's great for bronzer. It's very big and like almost egg shaped. It has so much taper to it as well, so it just... I don't know, it's a good shape for bronzer. So I kind of started out right here and then blend a little bit up onto my forehead. And I do typically have a couple of days per month where I try to use all of my project pan items, but I would say the majority of days I'm not using every single one like this because, I mean, obviously I don't want to neglect the rest of my collection. I feel like that's another very easy trap to fall into when it comes to project panning is you might get so hyper-focused on your project pan items that you just forget about all of your other makeup that also deserves to be used and loved. So that can also be kind of a tricky balance to find, but I find that, um, you know, I like to set usage goals for all of my items each month just to make sure that I'm using them and not forgetting to use them, but also because let's say I have the goal to use my Cloven Hello Blush 10 times in a month, that leaves the other 20 or 21 days that month that I can just use something else. So even though it might sound restrictive to set those usage goals, to me I feel like it actually ensures that I do allow myself the freedom to just dabble among all of my products on the days that I'm not using these. So that's another tip that has really helped for me. So next I'm going to use my CoverGirl Cheekers blush. This is a nice kind of soft mauve color and I will say this is a very sheer blush so because of that I end up building up a couple of layers of it and I feel like that's helped me to go through it and make some really good progress on it a little bit faster than I would with other blushes but with this blush, I like to almost contour with it in a way. Like, I have that Cloven Hallow blush on the more like the apples of my cheeks. And this blush, I like to sort of concentrate in this outer part of my cheek. And of course, I do blend it all the way in, but I definitely mainly apply it kind of out here in this region. And I feel like that just gives my cheeks a very nice dimensional look. Like this is the side without the CoverGirl blush yet, and this is the side with it. I really like that. And then I'll tap just a tiny bit of that on the bridge of my nose. So that's pretty much my cheek look. Okay, so I'm really liking this whole base look today. This NYX 
foundation I really have been enjoying. It's definitely one of those foundations that I can't really get away with when my skin is super dry in the winter. But now that it's spring and the weather has warmed up, uh, my skin has been a lot more normal. So this foundation really is beautiful on I would say like normal to oily skin. Or if you do have dry patches, just make sure to really prep your skin well before you apply it. I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows and I'm actually gonna be using one of my Pan Those Eyeshadows shades in my brows. So I'm going in with my e.l.f. Shape and Stay Brow Wax. This is not in my project pan, but I do like how this just kind of pushes my brow hairs into place. So I've been really enjoying using this shade Mercury as my brow color recently. That was a tip that I learned from one of you guys and it actually works really well in my brows. If you have like taupe brows or you typically go for like a taupe color in brow pencils or pomades, this is a really good color. I definitely think applying a, a wax before going in with the powder really helps the powder cling. Otherwise, I feel like the powder just probably wouldn't stay in place very well. But I'm just using my ABH brow brush and dipping into that color. It's a very powdery shade, um, so I try not to pick up too much, but... But I've really been liking that look lately. I feel like it looks not too harsh and it's just the perfect tone for my brows. I definitely like a cooler toned brow. Even though I have some warmth to my hair, I still really like a cool brow for some reason. Okay, so I'm trying to decide where I wanna go with today's eye look. I think I do wanna do a look with my NYX Vivid Brights eyeliner, this liquid liner that's in my project pan because I think it's gonna match my sweater really nicely. So, Honestly, my favorite way to wear this recently is to do a very, very simple eye look with just like a pop of color in the inner corner and then a winged liner with this. But I do want to at least use a couple of my Pan Those Eyeshadow shades. I'm not going to use all of them today just because um, I don't really think it will work with the look I have in mind. But if you watch my Pan Those Eyeshadows updates, I always do a look at the end of those videos using all five of my shades. So I think I'm actually going to recreate a look that I've done before with La Playa from ColourPop. This is a mint green. And this makes such a pretty inner corner highlight shade. This is going to be our pop of color today, so I'm going to go in with my Sigma E30 pencil brush. And I've already primed my eyelids, by the way. Just going to pop this in the inner corner. And this is kind of a sheer shade, so I definitely have to apply a few layers to really get the impact that I want, which again lends itself to, I guess, like faster progress than if it were like a super pigmented shadow. And I always like to bring it in to my like inner corner of my lid too, just so it's not like just on the corner. Like I like to blend it a little bit. So that's pretty much the eyeshadow. I think I am gonna take a little bit of a matte cream color. This is base from the Norvina palette and just use that to kind of set the entire lid just so there's like something on my lid. I don't know, for some reason I feel like if I have nothing on my eyelid, the, the look is just not complete, so. And it also just kind of sets my eyelid primer into place so it doesn't, I don't know, not that it would crease, but just in case, <laughs> I like to have that layer there. So I'm also going to take a tiny bit of that and just blend out this edge here. I don't like for the color to come down too low on the under eye. Okay, there's that. So then I'm going to shake this because I think it is meant to be shaken at first. Um, this is the NYX Vivid Brights Liquid Liner in Vivid Halo. I always just have the goal to use this three times in the month, so very attainable goal, but it's really just to encourage me to use it and find some fun ways to incorporate it into looks, and plus it's just such a perfect like pastel yellow color for spring. So lately with Winged Liner, I've really been enjoying kind of just starting it from the center of my lid out, or like just, just having it in the outer corner. That was another tip from the Trying Your Makeup Techniques video. But I just really like how that keeps my eye really nice and open. So I'm going to start with just the wing. Kind of stamping that on and then bringing it into like the inner or the outer third of my eyelid. And I just love what a simple statement that makes, you know? 
just two colors and that's it but it looks so fresh and pretty I also did this same look with a pastel like powder blue from the elf earth and ocean palette I did these two shades that was really fun I bet it would also be really pretty with like a peach there's so many different color combos I could do with this same liner I'm tempted to put just a very, very soft amount of Underwater from Elf Earth and Ocean. This I rolled into my pan those eyeshadows at the beginning of April. I think I'm just going to do a very, very soft, smudgy lower liner with this. Like, really not going to use much, but I do like to have a little bit of definition on my lower lash line. Mm. Actually, I'm kind of wishing I had skipped that. I'm going to take a little bit more of this matte cream color and just kind of smudge it over that. Just to soften it. I am just going to lightly tight line with my Marc Jacobs highliner in black. This is also in my project pan. Just on the upper lash line just to make my lashes look a little bit thicker. And I'm also going to use the Urban Decay Chill Setting Spray. This is in my makeup basket right now. I'm kind of low key trying to pan this but it's not in my project pan. I really don't like the sprayer on this. I feel like it just doesn't give me an even spray and it likes it gets kind of stuck each time I press it so I have to like pull it back up or I don't know not my fave so going in with the essence lash princess mascara finally tried essence for the first time in Wednesday's video that was such a fun video a um, lot of n potential new favorites all right so finally for the lips I have a lipstick and a lip gloss both in my project pan the lipstick I have is the covergirl lipstick in honeyed bloom sometimes I'll apply a lip liner like a slightly deeper lip liner but today I'm not going to because I think a nice light nude pink lip is gonna be really pretty with this springy eye look this is such a creamy comfortable lipstick um, I did use this as a cream blush once so far this month. It was beautiful. But because I have two other blushes in my project pan, I haven't really been doing that a whole lot. Mm, that's so pretty. And then the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Pink Cosmo. I've been wearing so much throughout this month. It's just, I forgot what a beautiful gloss this was. It's like a milky pink color. And it just, it works so well over this CoverGirl lipstick or on its own or just over literally any lip color. It just, it always looks good. And it's such a nice formula too. I feel like it actually lasts on my lips a lot longer than other glosses do. So yeah, really been enjoying this this month. All right, so that is, I think that's everything. Did I, did I use all of my products? I think I did. Like I said, I don't typically use every single product all in one day but I usually try to have at least one or two days a month where I just devote it to playing with my project pan items so I am going to go ahead and tally my uses I keep my list of project pan items in a notebook I have one section for my project pan the next section is for my pan those eyeshadows um, which I it's super simple I've had people ask me to show like how I do this it's, there's nothing to see really. It's literally just a list of the products and I draw a tally mark each time I use each one. This is what my April project pan one looks like. You can see I've used the e.l.f. gloss so many times already. And then I also keep a section for my makeup basket. These are my makeup basket items. So yeah, that's how I do it. I can definitely see how that would probably feel like a chore to some people, you know, keeping track of all that, but I actually really enjoy it. I don't know, there's just something satisfying about drawing my little tally marks every day. So I enjoy that, but um, I can see how it's not for everyone. But that is how I've been using all of my Project Pan items. You got to see them all in action. I'm loving this super simple springy pastel eye look. Let me know, what other colors do you think I should try with this yellow liner um, as my inner corner pop? So thank you so much for watching today and hanging out with me. I had so much fun creating this look together. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, feel free to check out the Patreon where I have bonus content going up every month. And otherwise, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you very soon in my next video. Bye.